Hi everyone, welcome to Gadgets with German. Today we have a really special episode, one that's very exciting to me, and I know very exciting to a lot of the people who watch this show and follow Apple. So coming up in the first week of June is WWDC, Apple's annual developer conference. And today we're going to talk all about that, what to expect, sort of a preview of what's going to happen at the event. We're going to take your questions, so please send your questions in on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll answer them over the course of the show. We really want to make this uh, an engaging episode because I know a lot of our followers here are really interested in this conference. So why is WWDC a big deal? Well, if you take a step back and really think about it, it gives us a look into what to expect from Apple on both the software side and the hardware side over the next 12 to 18 months. So they'll announce new versions of iOS, macOS, tvOS for the Apple TV, watchOS for the Apple Watch, and maybe a few new uh, platforms that we'll get into. And then those software releases will come out towards the end of the year. And then they're going to be the main devices and the main operating systems through June of next year, through 2018. And those will only start running the new next OS, the one coming after iOS 11 and whatnot, months after that. So this really gives us a picture of what to expect in the next year, year and a half or so. I'm personally excited uh, very much so for new laptops, which we reported at Bloomberg will be on the table for WWDC, as well as iOS 11, the new operating system. Uh, for the iPhone, the iPad, uh, also the core of the new tvOS and uh, watchOS. So please send in your questions and we'll be sure to uh, answer all of those. Now, first I want to talk about the new laptops. So we reported that Apple is going to announce at least three new laptops at WWDC. So the crown jewel of Apple's laptop lineup is the MacBook Pro. Last year in October they announced a new version and came in a new color, space gray in addition to the silver larger trackpad, quite a bit thinner, but the, the main component there was uh, the touch bar, basically that keyboard digital strip that you can use to control different functions in Note, Safari, iWork, and all that. So that MacBook Pro we're hearing is going to get an update at WWDC. It's not going to be a major overhaul because that's what they did last year, but it will be a good speed increase using the new uh, Intel chips, they're called Cabby Lake, and that will speed up quite a bit, it'll make the processor more efficient, maybe you'll get a little bit better battery life. Likewise for the 12-inch MacBook, I know a lot of people use that because of the thin and light and weight and whatnot, the cool colors, it comes in the same colors as, uh, as an iPad now with the rose gold and regular gold, and silver and space gray. That too will get an Intel update with faster processors. But there's something that also might be on the table and that's an update to the MacBook Air. While we're not 100% certain that the MacBook Air will be updated WWDC, Apple is working on a new MacBook Air and has considered updating it as soon as WWDC. That would have faster processors and whatnot. And the MacBook Air is really interesting because they haven't updated it in a long time. We compared it to the Surface Laptop, the new Microsoft Notebook, uh, a few weeks ago. And we said, you know, sort of aging, doesn't have a great screen. But a lot of people, Apple employees tell us, surprisingly still buy it and use it because it has really great battery life, over 12 hours of battery life. It's pretty thin light and that $999 price point as we talked about the Surface Laptop is very important. We have our first question coming in here. Will the new Macs get a redesign? That's a good question. So for this year, no, I don't believe so. Given that the MacBook uh, first came out with the current design in 2015, the MacBook Pro came out with its new design last fall, and the MacBook Air, they're really not going to give it a new design because the MacBook, which is still a bit more expensive, is the iteration on that design. So I don't expect newly designed Macs in terms of laptops this year, maybe next year, the year after, but I wouldn't bet on it for this year. Second question coming in here, will the new MacBook have two USB-Cs? That's a good question. So when that first 12-inch MacBook came out in 2015, all the talk was about how it has a single port, a single USB-C port. The MacBook Pro has four of them. So it would be interesting to see if Apple would add a second one. We had this big story about how Apple is developing Macs and why people are upset with Apple over the Macs around Christmas time in 2016 last fall. And according to people we spoke to at Apple, Apple had considered adding a second USB-C port to the MacBook update last year around March, April 2016 where they added the rose gold color option. They didn't end up doing it. They also considered a fingerprint scanner, the Touch ID uh, for the MacBook Pro back then. So we'll see if Apple plans uh, to do that for this year's iteration. What feature are you most excited about on the iPhone 8? That's a good question, and then we'll jump back into the WWDC stuff. I think that bigger, taller screen with the curved edges on the front or the back, basically the overall design, the home button integrated into the screen, is going to be the most exciting thing. You saw on our first episode with Gadgets of German, we reviewed the Samsung Galaxy S8. 
The prime new feature in that is that design with the curved edges, uh, the OLED display. I think that's really going to be the center, the core of this iPhone upgrade. I think that's what's going to excite a lot of people. I remember when I got the iPhone 4 back in 2010, that jump from the screen on the iPhone 3GS to the iPhone 4 was amazing. It really was game changing. And once you use the retina display, it was really hard to use anything else. So I think we're going to see a similar transition from the retina display to the OLED display in terms of the deeper whites, the deeper blacks, the much better color reproduction on those screens. Um, another question here, will the MacBook come with a Touch ID on the back or under the screen? No, the MacBook, you know, the Touch ID was on the side, sort of like on the, uh, the MacBook Pro, right where the power button is. But let's, let's jump back into some WWDC stuff. And for those just joining us, we're talking about Apple's upcoming Worldwide Developers Conference. Uh, June 5th is the, is the keynote date. They're going to talk about iOS 11, new watchOS, tvOS, macOS 10.13. So what's going to be the story with iOS 11, right? So we reported that iOS 11 is going to have an updated user interface. Why is that important? Because like I said, it sort of gives us a picture of these WWDC software releases. It's what to expect from Apple in the next term of the future, so 12 to 18 months. So the iPhone 8, it's gonna come out around September, October, November of 2017, we reported. It's not gonna have a home button. It's all gonna be integrated into the display. So very much a full screen front, thin bezels around the sides. Now, iOS 11 is going to need to make fundamental changes and be redesigned in a way to accommodate a new screen that doesn't have a physical home button. So you can imagine the types of tasks that Apple will have to integrate more deeply into the OS because they're not gonna have a button on the front to do those things. Another thing is the iPad. So the iPad Pro came out in 2015, and then they did the 9.7 inch version, the smaller version last year. They both have support for the Apple Pencil stylus and the physical keyboard. But I use an iPad Pro, the 13 inch model, and I don't really see a ton of functionality in there that will get me to leave my Mac or replace the Mac. It's basically a blown up iPhone user interface. I think this is the year, 2017, where the iPad is gonna come into its own. It's gonna allow itself to become a device that you can buy instead of a Mac. It's gonna get a lot of new functionality for pro users in mind, productivity in mind, sort of taking on the, you know, the Surface Pro tablets. Now we reported uh, a few times on Bloomberg about how big software changes are coming uh, to the iPad. There's gonna be more integration with the stylus. There's gonna be faster displays coming to iPad hardware. So I think there's a lot of excitement in the iPad line this year. And just earlier this year, they came out with a cheaper iPad to try to bring iOS to more people. And like I said at the time, when that cheaper iPad came out, and I, I know we featured it alongside the red iPhone on the show around March, early April, is that I thought they were coming out with that cheaper iPad with the faster processor to be able to accommodate a lot of these new software features. The iPad Air that it replaces has an older processor, right? So it wouldn't be easy for Apple to add new functionality. So I think that cheaper iPad with the faster chip is a really hard piece of evidence and a tease towards more software functionality coming to the iPad over the course of this year. And we'll certainly hear more about that at WWDC. Here's another question. Do you know the price of the new MacBook Pro? Well, whenever Apple updates the MacBook Pro or any laptops and such after one or two generations after a big redesign, historically they like to drop the price, maybe $100, $200. This is gonna be the first refresh after the big redesign in the fall. It would seem plausible that they might want to drop the price a little bit, given there were some people concerned about the pricing uh, last year. Another question coming in here. What can we expect from Apple in terms of battery life and battery power over the next few years? Well, obviously, they always like to increase battery life. But at the same time, they like to increase the amount of functionality. Now, those are two polar opposites. The more functionality you add into a phone or a laptop, it will reduce the battery life. So you can't really increase the battery life while adding a ton of new functionality at the same time. The best that they've usually been able to do is retain battery life while adding new features. So basically putting a lot of work in to make the phone more efficient, increase the battery life, and add more features. And at the same time, it'll all balance out when the product shifts to sort of retain or change a little bit, a little bit better the battery life while still adding more functionality. Now, given that iOS 11 is going to have an updated user interface, I thought it would be really cool to show off an original iPhone here. So let's, let's zoom in on the, on the monitor here, and I want to show you that um, the new screen, oh, we have the iPhone here uh, first, just so you can see the, the lock screen here. Um, you can slide to unlock, and this is the original iPhone operating system. This is actually the original interface, but it's uh, iPhone OS 3. Now, this was the, the newest operating system you can get on this original iPhone here. 
Now you can see the icon grid is very different uh, in comparison to the current iteration. There's no 3D touch, none of the flashy things here. You can install apps on iPhone OS 3. It's very sluggish, very slow. Uh, you can see the icons have the schemorphic design, so they really look like the applications uh, themselves. So the weather app has a sun and it looks really 3D and such. A map is a map. You have the messages. And this is back when they had the YouTube app and they had like a flower here. As you know, with iOS 7, they, they changed all of that. So I think this is really fun to take a look back just for nostalgic purposes and see what we sort of had in the past here. You know, you have the phone app, the iPod app. Something when I was playing around with this that I thought was actually really cool that Apple unfortunately doesn't have anymore. I don't believe it's on iTunes either, but it's this feature called CoverFlow. I remember when Steve Jobs showed this for the first time at Macworld in 2007 that really got the, cloud, uh, the crowd cheering. Basically, you can see all your music in album form. This isn't my music, by the way. And you can sort of jump in and play your music like that. You click an album, and it will show you all the songs, and you click it, and it'll start playing. So I actually thought it would be really cool to show everyone that. Also, like you see the Notes app. Here, I'll give an example here. If you open the Notes app, it actually looks like a real notepad, like a yellow notepad. Uh, you plug the keyboard in there. The keyboard had, didn't change much, but it's very interesting to see how much iOS has changed over time. And I think we're going to start to see a little bit more of a fundamental shift over the next few OS updates because of the new hardware that it's going to have to support. So let's zoom back out here and uh, take some more questions and talk more about WWDC. So here's another question. Will the MacBooks get rid of the headphone jack like the phone? That's a good question. One of the reasons why they got rid of the headphone jack on the iPhone is because they wanted to add waterproofing, water resistance, a better way to make sure if you drop your phone in the pool or in the sink or something like that, that the phone wouldn't get damaged and you wouldn't have to put it in a bag of rice. With a MacBook, that doesn't really make as much sense to remove the headphone jack. They clearly have the space for it. There's really no reason to remove it. So I'd be actually very shocked. Uh, if they remove the headphone jack from the Macs. There's, there's no reason to do it at this point. There's a lot of people who use the MacBook Pro, for example, in studio environments, video editing environments, and removing the headphone jack will actually, I think, annoy uh, quite a few Mac loyalists. Uh, so let's talk about some other stuff that we're expecting from WWDC. TVOS and watchOS. TVOS and watchOS are sort of new you know, forks of iOS. So a version for the Apple TV, a version for the Apple Watch. Now, it was very interesting. Uh, there was a report in Gizmodo a few months ago about different incidents that happened with Apple employees on a ski trip uh, in, in California somewhere. They were testing a new version of the Apple Watch that actually can measure you skiing. So I would guess, based on that, that Apple is planning, developing, wanting to put in some sort of activity tracking for skiing. So if you're skiing or doing things on mountains and you know water sports maybe, all sorts of stuff, I would expect a lot more functionality on the fitness side. They seem to be positioning the Apple Watch more recently rather than a fashion device, more as a fitness device. So that seems to all line up. That I think we're going to see a bigger push on that. You might remember a couple weeks ago we reported that Apple bought a company called Bedit. They make sleep tracking functionality software for the iPhone, the iPad, the Apple Watch, as well as a hardware component, basically this pad that you slip under your bed and it can measure your sleep. It can tell you how well you slept. We had the Fitbit Alta HR on this show uh, a few weeks ago. We talked about the sleep tracking functionality. It would be very interesting if Apple added some more sleep functionality into the Apple Watch, being able to tell you how well you slept, how long you slept, things like that. So I would not be surprised to see more of that in the near future, tying the, the recent industry trends, Apple's work, patents, and of course, the acquisition of Bedit in, in recent months together. I wouldn't be shocked about that. On the TV side, you know, the Apple TV is very interesting. In 2015, they updated it with Siri in an app store. I think the Apple TV still needs to get some love. There's been a lot of discussions on the content side. Why is PlayStation? Why is Dish? Why is uh, Sling? Why, why is DirecTV? They're able to pull off these over-the-top uh, networks, but how come Apple's not able to do it? So I think at some point Apple's going to have to answer that question and give users a way to stream content, movies, TV shows on a subscription basis. There's a lot of people like myself that likes to rent movies on iTunes, but wouldn't it be cool if you could pay one flat fee monthly or yearly or even daily and just get all the content you want, similar to Netflix, but a much bigger library? I think that would be very interesting. Another question here, is Apple working on an Alexa or Google Home competitor? Yes, so yes. Apple is working on a direct competitor, a speaker to the Amazon Echo, Alexa, and Google Home. We actually were the first to report on this. We reported on it last year. 
And so how is Apple going to differentiate from the competition besides, obviously, instead of Google Assistant, it's going to be Siri. Instead of Alexa, it's going to be Siri. Well, speaker technology and microphones. So Apple really wants to make sure it could up the game in terms of sound quality and microphone quality. Will we see that at WWDC? There's a chance. And uh, stay tuned to Bloomberg for more on that in the near future if we have something to report on the Siri speaker. But I think the existence of it, we reported on it last year, is, is very exciting. It would be a new frontier for Apple sort of lock people into the Apple ecosystem. So it would be a very exciting new piece of hardware. It's first piece of new hardware since the Apple Watch. And obviously, Apple is working on its own AR project as well. We had a big story on that. So it'll be interesting to see how Apple's new hardware categories plays out over the next 6 to 12 to 18 to 24 months. Another question. Any idea when the new Mac Pro workstation is coming out? It's been a few years since this one came out. That's a good question. So it was WWDC. 2013 when Apple announced the current Mac Pro, that cylindrical glossy black sort of trash can looking device that's manufactured in Austin, Texas. Now they have not updated the MacBook Pro in any significant way since then, except for a few weeks ago, they sort of came out and said, hey, you know, we haven't really done a good job updating the Mac Pro. It was because of the thermal, the heat sink systems, the technology didn't really allow us to update the Mac Pro at, rap at rapid pace. But what Apple did say is, hey, we're going to give a few new processors now. We're not going to up the price. We're not going to change any significant features. But in a, one to two years from now, Apple is going to come out with an all new Mac Pro based around being able to upgrade it on the fly. I remember the previous Mac Pro design, you can pull off the, the side sort of like a shelf and put in different graphics cards, CPU, RAM, all sorts of stuff. And that's what professionals want to do. They want to be able to buy this workstation, this big desktop computer that they can hook up to any monitor and interchange parts at will. Put anything they want in it. A new graphics card comes out from a new graphics card company, put that in without having to buy a whole new machine. And that was a problem with the Mac Pro, the current trash can-like iteration. You couldn't update it on the fly whenever new pieces of technology would come out. And on top of that, Apple didn't come out with new versions on its own. So that really left Pro users stuck. But I think it's great that Apple has realized this, they admitted it, and they're going to fix it. And given all the backlash they've received from Pros, given that Pros are core to the Apple market, they really brought Apple back from the dead two decades ago, I don't think they're going to mess it up this time. And I think it's going to be a really big deal for the company. Another question here, will Apple compete with Facebook and create AR VR glasses? So we had a few stories over the last six months indicating that Apple's working on a pair of heads up AR glasses. And I think that's gonna be a really significant endeavor for Apple. They have a large several hundred person team working on this. They've hired the best of the best in the film industry, the movie industry, the graphics industry, software developers, VR people from other companies like Amazon that are really focusing on this. It'll be interesting to see when it happens, but this really could be Apple's next big thing. The Apple Watch was not the hit that people wanted. The last real Apple hit was the iPhone, the iPad before that, the iPod, and obviously the iMac, uh, which really brought Apple back from almost hitting bankruptcy. So I think the AR glasses, not the Siri speaker, will be the next big thing. And uh, that'll be coming over the next few years. We reported that Apple is thinking about releasing it as soon as 2018 or announcing it at least by then. But I'd say by 2020, 2019, we'll see something there. And maybe a couple of years after that, we'll see what Apple has in store uh, for the car, its self-driving car project after that. So we'll be covering WWDC Live uh, in June at the keynote and giving all the coverage before then and, and after then. So please stay tuned for that and stay tuned for a new episode of Gadgets with Roman next week. Thanks.